Okay. We're back. So, okay, we've got a few minutes, a few minutes before we begin. Um, sorry, um, it went off. Hi, Lucy. Um, yeah, the previous um, uh, session went off because it detected a copyright issue because of the music I was playing. So um, I turned the music off and um, hopefully um, that should have sorted things. Um, so feel free to put on your own music in the background. Um, yeah, sorry about that, you guys, but uh, teething problems, at least I'll know for next time. So, um, right, thank you for joining me. We've got a couple minutes. Um, so grab your mats if you haven't already, grab your blocks, strap if you need a strap, and um, we shall get started very, very shortly. Um, we all good with the sound quality, if I'm over here, you can hear me all right over here. Um, someone maybe comment, just, you know, yes, I can hear you or something like that. So um, I know how loud to speak. Uh, so yeah, we're all good over here, let me know. Um, and like I said, we had a couple of problems. Oh, good stuff, thank you. Um, so for those that are joining, I had a, um, a problem with copyright playing the music in the background. So the music is off, which um, as an Ashtangi, that's the way we like it. But, um, but yeah, feel free to put your own music on in the background if uh, if you want to. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you for joining me, you guys, from my humble abode to yours. A different way of, uh, of doing the yoga class this evening. Um, but it's, it's nice for you guys to, to join me. So thank you for giving me your time this evening. Um, it's going to be a gentle, nice gentle class for you guys. So we're not going to be doing any Ashtanga. Um, just in case there's people that have never done yoga before that have decided to join me. Um, so we're just going to keep it nice and chill. We're going to have a good stretch and... Uh, you know, some challenging things in there, but nothing too crazy. So available to every kind of level. So, um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get settled in. Um, so let's come to our mats. Uh, we good? We good to go? Good. I know Jane's watching. Eric, Silver Fox, Eric, hi. Who we got there? Oh, there is my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> oh, I can still. Right, so um, yeah, you might want to put your computer in a place near the top of your mat. Um, that's the way we're going to be most of the time, or halfway between the front and the side. Um, so yeah, just decide uh, where's good for you. Of course, you can. Uh, move it and also you can rest at any point if you need to during the class as always so a uh, nice chilled relaxing class it is seven o'clock and it's time for us to begin so let's come to lie down on our backs to begin so just getting nice and comfortable and just closing your eyes here You can have your hands on your abdomen if you want, or above your head or by your side, you know, whatever feels good in your body right now. And we'll just allow the body to be heavy. And just letting go of anything that doesn't serve you right now. Letting go of any expectations for the practice this evening. Letting go of any worries, any anxieties. Just allowing yourself to be present on your mat for the next 60 minutes. Just you exploring your inner space on the comfort 
of your own home. And we'll just do a body scan from the crown of the head all the way down. Just check in that we're nice and relaxed. So softening the forehead, softening the eyebrows, allowing the eyelids to be heavy, soften behind the eyes, soften the cheeks, the jaw, allowing the tongue to fall away from the roof of the mouth, creating space between your back teeth. And just taking a moment to notice how you feel right now. How does the body feel? Noticing how the mind is. Is it quite busy? Or is it quite still this evening? And bringing your awareness to your breath. And just noticing the breath and the quality of the breath. Notice if it's fast or slow. And we'll bring our feet towards each other and allow the knees to fall out to the side. And as we come into Sutta Vadakanasana, option to keep your arms where they are again, you can be above the head or bringing them onto the abdomen. We're really starting to connect to the breath. And we'll start to take control of the breath now. So I'm moving the breath from the subconscious and into the conscious, conscious breathing. We'll start to take some deep inhales. Drawing the breath down into the abdomen and allowing the abdomen to rise, expand like a balloon. And here we're just waking up the lower part of the lungs. As you exhale, exhale the breath completely so the navel falls towards the spine before you take your next inhale. Notice any sensations in the body as we start to deepen the breath. Maybe you can feel the rush of oxygen as it moves around the body. We'll start to move that breath of the body now towards the shoulders. So as you inhale, draw your breath down into the abdomen. Draw it up into the chest, feeling the ribs expand, armpit to armpit. And as you exhale, the chest falls, the abdomen falls. And continue to breathe at your own pace. Enjoying the breath now, down into the abdomen, up into the chest and all the way up into the shoulders. 
And as you exhale, allowing the shoulders to fall, the chest to fall, and the abdomen to contract. This is your full yogic breath. And as we move through the practice, we want to try to maintain this kind of breathing using the full capacity of the lungs. And maybe adding a sound to the breath, activating your ujjayi breath by constricting the back of the throat slightly. And we try to make the sound like a distant ocean. Of course, if you can't make the sound, no worries. Just keep those deep controlled breaths going. This is such a restorative posture in by Kanasana. I'm just using gravity to open the hips. It can be quite intense as well. So if you feel it's getting a little bit intense, you can always bring the knees back together. Put some blocks or some cushions underneath the legs. And bring the hands now to the outside of the thighs, slowly, slowly. I'm going to help those legs back together. And draw the knees into the chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Maybe having a rock from side to side. Keep breathing. Those ujjayi breaths. I'm going to interlace the fingers in front of the right shin, draw the right thigh into the body, and send the left leg towards the mat. I'm just going to hover that left leg just above the mat, just to wake up the core, wake up the legs. If it's too much keeping that leg hovered, you can always drop the heel to the mat. You can just do whatever feels good in your body. We're just going to start to make some rainbow movements with that right thigh. So I'm bringing the knee over towards the right shoulder, the right arm, and then drawing it back across the hip towards the center line of the body. Okay, just moving here. And just becoming aware of how that right hip feels. Keep that breath going. We'll now drop that left heel to the mat. We'll take the right arm out to a T. Left hand comes across that right knee and we're just gonna come into a spinal twist. So drawing that right knee across the body to the mat. You're gonna have the foot on the mat. If it's floated in the air seat, maybe tuck that right foot behind the back of the left leg just to provide a bit of support. And we're gonna drop the head over to the right. Just taking a stretch all the way up the body into the neck. We're just releasing the spine here. And then maybe you can feel a stretch across the chest into that right shoulder. Again, just being aware of any sensations you feel in your body. Notice your tension. And deep breaths. And draw the head back to center or draw that knee back to center. I'm going to bring the left foot onto the mat and send the right foot towards the ceiling. We're going to release the back of the legs now. Interlace the fingers behind the back of the right thigh, the calf. You can use a strap here if you're really tight in the hamstrings and the leg is back here somewhere. You can use a strap around the sole of that right foot. You can take the foot if you can take the foot easily, keeping the shoulders, the head relaxed. Again, just drawing a little bit of tension through that right leg. 
just make sure that the sacrum is connected to the mat here. So keep grounding down through that bony bit in the lower back. And let's just make some rotations with that right ankle now. So nice and slowly, just finding your full range of movement through that right ankle. And just following it one direction. And then we'll change direction now. Let's go in the opposite way. You can just notice how that right leg feels. Notice how that ankle is. Maybe you're finding that ankle is clicking and popping. If that's the case, it's all good. Pops and clicks are fine as long as there's no pain associated with those pops and clicks. Let's just flex that right ankle now. So draw the toes back towards the shin. And we just provided a little bit of extra pull on that right leg just to really wake up the back of the right leg. We're not going too hard here. Remember, we're just starting out, so the muscles aren't warm. Let's just take our time here. And just check no tension has crept back into your face. We'll bend that right knee and drop the right ankle just above the left knee. For a reclined pigeon posture. Option one is just to stay here, maybe provide a little bit of support, a little bit of pressure, sorry, to that right thigh, just opening that right hip. If you're going well, maybe lifting that left foot off the mat, and we're going to interlace the fingers behind the back of the left thigh. And if you've got a little bit more in the hips, you want to take it deeper, maybe in front of that right shin. And you're just trying to stay nice and relaxed through the shoulders, and try to keep this right ankle flex, so pull the toes back towards the shin, and that provide a little bit of support for that right knee. Option to find stillness here, or you can rock from side to side if you wish. And again, just notice how the right hip feels. We're targeting the glutes here, the outer glutes. Maybe there's a lot of tension there because we're quarantined. We can't move much. So maybe the hips are a little bit tight. You can just notice, just witness. At the same time, keep drawing that tailbone towards the mat. So try to stop the bum lifting up here. The bum lifts, we tend to escape the posture. So keep drawing that tailbone down. And we'll release. That left foot back down, we'll bring the right foot back down. Let's pipe the legs towards the ceiling. So, again, just releasing any bad blood from the legs here. Let's take the hands towards the feet. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's engage the abdomen and lift the head and shoulders off the mat, just reaching towards those toes. Inhale to come back down and exhale, let's lift up again. Inhale down, exhale, lift. Inhale down, exhale, lift. Inhale down, exhale, lift. Let's hold the three, you're just waking up the core, the two. One, and exhale, release. Let's pull that left knee in to the body now, and we'll send that right leg towards the mat. So again, we're just hovering that heel above the mat. Again, unless it's too much, then plant that foot down. And again, just making those rainbow movements with that left thigh across the body, across the front of the hip. And as always, just witnessing, just noticing. How is that hip? Is it different to the other hip? Are there pops and clicks in this hip? Is it feeling a little bit tense across the front? And bringing that leg Back in or the thigh back in, we'll drop that right heel now. I'm coming into that reclined twist on the opposite side. So taking that left hand out, 
Right hand comes to the outside of that left knee and just drawing the knee across the body. Trying to keep that chest open to the ceiling and then dropping the head over to the left. And again, the foot can be on the mat if it's floating in the air, maybe hook it behind that right leg and provide it with a bit of support. And it means you can relax a little bit more here. You can just let go rather than trying to hold on and keep those breaths going. Every exhale, just letting everything go. Relaxing completely. Let's stay one more breath here. And then draw the head back to center, draw the leg back to center. We're going to bring the right foot onto the mat and send that left leg towards the ceiling now. So again, just stretching out the back of that left leg. Again, option to take the calf, the thigh, you can take the foot or use a strap. And let's make some rotations with that left ankle now. And again, just noticing how the ankle feels. Maybe it's a little bit noisy. Yeah, it's all good. Taking those rotations the opposite way now. See if you can find the full range of movement through the ankle. Good. And we'll flex the ankle. Let's get this leg nice and strong. So really engage quadriceps. And we'll just apply a little bit more pressure to the back of that left leg. So open up the leg a little bit more. Okay, not going too hard. So we want to provide a little bit of uh, kind of resistance here, but we don't want it to be so hard that we're creating more tension in the back of that left leg. So just find where it feels good for you. And again, keep that breath going. Deep Ujjayi breathing. Relaxed face. And bending that left knee, we'll come into that reclined pigeon posture. So again, our option one is just to stay here and apply a little bit of pressure to that left thigh, or we're picking that right foot up and interlacing the fingers behind the back of the right thigh. So taking the left hand through the gap. <clears throat> and again, just softening, relaxing, and keeping that left ankle flexed. Always, always, always protect the knees. Support the knees. And if you're going well, you can interlace fingers in front of the right shin. And keep pulling that tailbone towards the mat. Just check that bone isn't lifting here. And again, option to add some movement. That feels good. I always like some movement in my recline pigeon. Stops me tensing up so much. Especially if my hips are feeling particularly tight. Now we'll release. We'll pipe those legs to the ceiling again. And take the hands up. Doing exactly the same as before. I'm just going to wake up the core. Inhale, exhale, engage the abdomen, lift as much as you can. Inhale to come back down. Exhale, lifting up. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. Reach. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. Inhale down. The last one, exhale. And hold, breathe for three, two, one. Inhale, come down. Exhale, pull the knees in, give yourself a squeeze. We'll bring the hands to the backs of the thighs now. We're just going to start to rock and roll. This is just going to loosen up the spine. Maybe you're rocking up onto your sit bones and then rocking back down again. And again, if this pops or clicks, it's all good. As long as there's no pain. And 
Come on, next rock up and rock up to seated. Let's swing the legs around. In fact, yeah, let's work on our hips a little bit more. Because we're all uh, kind of all sitting doing nothing, so let's work on our hips. So we're going to bring the right leg in front of the left leg. It's the normal, easy cross-legged position. If you're a little bit more open in your hips, you can start to stack the legs. So bring in uh, one shin on top of the other shin here. And stay nice and long, nice and tall through the spine. We're just going to start to lean forward. So you should feel this. If the right leg is on top, you should feel it more in that right hip. Option to take the hands forward a little bit more. If you're here and you can feel it here, and if that leg is in front, if you can feel it here, just stay here and just work on opening through that right hip and just breathe. Continue to breathe those deep breaths into that tension in the right hip. And while we're here, let's look at our bandhas. Let's start to activate our, uh, our bandhas. So, Udhyana Bandha in the abdomen. So draw the navel towards the spine and lift your pelvic floor, activating Mula Bandha. Really important as we move into the next part of the practice. Good, inhaling. As we exhale, we're gonna round down, spiral down, bringing our head towards the left knee. I should increase a little bit more of the um, stretch in that right hip here. Again, just going where it feels good. If you're here and you're feeling the ear, this is all good. Stay here. This is fine. And inhale, we'll come up. I'm going to a little twist. Bring the left hand onto the right knee, right hand behind the back. Inhale, find a little bit of length through your spine, and exhale, we'll twist. And we'll gaze over the right shoulder. Stay in here, just moving with the breath. Inhale, find a little bit more length. Then exhale, twist a little bit deeper if you can. Again, keep that navel drawn in. Keep the bandage on now. And inhale, we'll come back to center. Exhale, let's switch the legs. So left leg in front of the right leg. So you're going to feel free to stack the legs if you're a little bit more open in the hips. But again, for most people, this is going to be enough. We should feel again more in the left hip now with the left leg in front or on top. And again, staying here, option one, just working from here, leaning forward a little bit, just find comfort while you're reaching forward. And finding a deeper stretch to that left hip. Again, just going wherever feels good for you. And it's a good thing when you're at home practicing alone because uh, there's no competition. So, uh, yeah, you're a little bit easier on yourself uh, when you're practicing at home. I don't wish there should be any competition in the yoga room, but it happens. We know it happens. And you're going to keep breathing into that tension in that left hip. Take an inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to spiral down towards the right knee. And again, you should feel this increase the stretch through that left hip. And again, those who joined expecting Ashtanga, my apologies. But uh, probably we've got some people watching that uh, are new to yoga, so I'll bound it down a little bit. Nice relaxing uh, yoga class this evening. Not too relaxing. You want to push it in a little bit, don't worry. It's, uh, it's nice and chilled. And inhale, we'll come up. And we'll come into that twist on the other side. So right hand onto that left knee, left hand behind the back. Inhale, find length in your spine and exhale, twist. And again, just keep moving with that breath. Inhale, find a little bit more length. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper if you can. Stay here a couple more breaths. And then inhale, coming back to the front. Exhale, let's swing the legs around and we'll find a tabletop position. So 
So knees underneath the hips and hips, uh, knees, hips distance apart. The fingers spread and the palms actively pressing into the mat. Again, good connection, especially with the index thumb side of the hand here. Protraction through the shoulder blades. We're trying to draw the shoulder blades away from each other, just making sure we're not sinking into those shoulders. And tucking the tailbone under slightly. Draw the navel to the spine again. Don't forget about the bandits. And just holding here for a little while. Option to just rock forwards and backwards a little bit here as well. Just working into our wrist flexibility if that feels good. And just notice maybe one wrist feels a little bit tighter than the other. So for me, it's my right wrist. I feel it a lot more through that right wrist as I'm doing this than through the left. And then we'll come back to center. Let's come into some cat cows and warming up the spine. As we inhale, we're going to lift the tailbone up, drop the navel, send the heart forward, find opening through the rib cage, through the abs, through the rib cage. Chest goes forward, lifting the gaze, looking up. As we exhale, we're tucking the tailbone under, rounding through the spine, all the way up through to the shoulders, chin comes to the chest. Inhale to come into your cow. Lifting our sit bones, dropping the navel, heart forward, looking up. And exhale, coming into your cat. We'll keep doing this just for a few breaths into the rhythm of your own breath. So if you need to move faster or move more slowly to stay with your breath, go ahead and do so. And then just lubricating the spine here. Let's do one more round. And then we'll come back to a neutral spine. We're going to inhale as we extend that right leg back. So we want the ankle to be flexed and the toes pointing down towards the mat. Just check that that right hip isn't lifting up here. Draw that right hip down in line with the left and switch the abs on. So draw that navel in. Just waking up that leg. And again, continuing to wake up the core. And pressing back through that right heel to see if you can find that line of energy from the crown of the head all the way through to that right heel. If you're going well, you can take your balancing table, sending the left arm forward and trying to find stability in your balancing table. So just check that we're really pressing into the mat with that right hand. We're trying to stabilize through that left foot, the left shin. And we've got that breath going nice and deep. Take an inhale. Exhale, elbow comes towards the knee, squeeze, round the spine, round into the shoulders. Inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring them in, squeeze. Inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring them in, squeeze. Inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring them in, squeeze. Inhale, send them back out. One more, exhale, bring them in, squeeze. We're gonna hold, finding that compression. Hold for three, keep breathing, keep breathing. For two, around the spine, pull that thigh in. One, inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring the hand onto the mat. We're gonna keep that leg straight, but drop the foot to the mat. We're gonna pin it on that left knee. Turn the leg out and open up into a side plank. So we're gonna be pressing the hips forward here. Send that right arm towards the ceiling. Option to stay here. Just working into your plank, into that side plank a little bit here. Option to lift that right leg off the mat. If you're lifting the leg, just make sure that those hips stay forward here. And you can lift the gaze, gaze to the right hand if you wish. We'll hold a couple more breaths. One more breath. And exhale, lower the leg. And come back to the mat, pivot on that knee and bring that right knee back underneath the hip. We're going to do the same on the other side. 
rotating that left leg, sending it back. And again, just checking that left hip doesn't start to lift, drop it down in line with the right. And again, just check the navel is in, just check we're not dipping into the lower back here. We find a strength through the arms, through the shoulders. And again, if you're going well, balancing table, send that right arm forward. And now see if you can really find that line of energy from the fingertips all the way through to that left heel. Trying to find stability and just gazing onto your mat, just inside of that left hand. Take an inhale. Exhale, elbow to knee, squeeze, round the spine, pull that thigh in. Inhale to send them back out. Exhale to bring them in, squeeze. Find that compression strength. Inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring it in, squeeze. Inhale, send them back out. Exhale, bring them in, squeeze. I think this is the fourth one. Inhale, send them back out. The last one we're going to hold. Exhale, bring it in, hold. Find that compression, round the spine. For three, keep breathing, breathe deep. For two, one. Inhale, send them out. Exhale, hand onto the mat, drop the foot. Again, we're gonna pivot on that right knee, turn out. Send the hips forward and reach that left arm towards the ceiling. And again, option to stay here or you're lifting that left foot up, just waking up the outer glutes, waking up the leg. Option to lift the gaze, stay nice and long in the neck, don't allow the head to hang here. And we'll hold a couple more breaths, keep pressing the hips forward, and exhale, lower the foot, hand comes back to the mat, pivot on that right knee, left knee comes back in. We'll come into child's pose, bring the big toes to touch, send the knees wide, sit back on the heels, and take a rest in child's. So forehead to the mat. And it's such a nice grounding posture. This is a posture you can come into at any point during the class. Let's lift the gaze. We'll come back onto the hands and knees. Let's tuck the toes under, send the hips back and up, and we'll find our first downward facing dog. So as always, downward facing dog, you can have the knees bent. It's all about a nice, long spine. So bend the knees if you feel that the upper back is rounding in your downward facing dog. And think of lifting the sit bones nice and high. Getting a good connection between the palms of the hands and your mat. Your feet are hips width apart, no more, no less. As always, feel free to pedal the legs here if it's your first downward facing dog. And again, just a time to notice how you feel, notice your areas of tension. We'll walk the hands towards the feet and we'll take a rag dog. So bend the knees as much as you need to, especially if you're really tight in the hamstrings. We don't want you to be here, we want you to be here. So support the lower back a little bit if you need to by bending the knees. Taking hold of opposite elbows, relax the head, relax the neck, maybe nod the head, do a shake the head now. Make sure there's no tension there. Option to find stillness option to sway from side to side in your ragdoll. And I want the weight tipped forward slightly in your ragdoll, so just make sure you're not sinking the weight into the heel so much in this posture. Let's bring the hands to the mat. Let's heel toe the feet just wide, as wide as the mat. And we're going to sink down and just open the hips in Malasana. So our yogi squat. So you want to be at the back of the mat. Remember that is the correct way to squat. It's whatever feels good in your body. If the heels aren't down, move the feet a little bit wider. See if you can get the heels down. If still no look, you can be here on your hands, just working through those hips. It's all good. If you're going well, 
we'll bring the hands into prayer and we'll press the elbows to the inside of the legs, hands heart center, and try to find length through the spine. So reach through the crown of the head, sink those hips nice and low, and breathe. Good option to take those left fingertips, walk them out to the outside. We're pressing the upper arm into that leg and reaching that right arm high. Breathe in. Inhale. Exhale, switch. So the right fingertips walk out and we inhale, send that left arm high. It's a nice twist through the spine here. No worries if it feels uncomfortable, especially in the front of the legs, if you're quite tight. Inhale and exhale, release. Bringing the hands back to the mat, we'll walk the hands forward and we'll find that downward facing dog again. Turn back around on the mat. Looking between your hands now, inhale, we'll walk the feet towards the hands. Feet together, extend through your spine, halfway lift. Maybe your halfway lift is here, we just want full extension in your spine. And then exhale, come into your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Find the extension through the spine and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Root down through the feet, micro bend to the knees. Inhale as we make our way up. Palms touch, reach, and full extension through your spine. And exhale, hands, heart center. So, sun salutation, sun salutation A. Inhale, raise in your prayer, strong through the legs. Find that extension. Exhale, folding forward, flex it in the spine as you fold. Hands to the mat, head comes in, lift the sit bones. Inhale, find extension through the spine again. And exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back, and we'll find downward facing dog again. Good. And then look in between your hands, inhale, walk in or jump in feet to hands this time if you wish, extend through your spine, exhale, forward fold. Inhale to come all the way up, root down through the feet, if I am extension, draw the navel in and exhale, hands hard centre. Inhale, raise the breath. Exhale, swan dive, take the arms out to the side as you fall forward, head comes in, sit bones lift. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, stepping the feet back. We're going to find high plank this time. So draw the navel to the spine. Again, press hands into the mat. Tuck the tailbone under, find strength. We don't want the lower back to be dipping here. Find a good plank. We don't want the bone to be too high as well. Find that point where we really start to work your core. I'm just holding a couple more breaths here. Option to drop to the knees, come into half plank if you need to. Inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, all through Chaturanga Dandasana, all the way down to the mat. We'll point the toes. Inhale, coming into Cobra. So we want to be mindful that we're using the upper back more than anything here. Draw the elbows back, so it's baby Cobra. So we're really trying to keep the lower ribs on the mat here. The legs are strong, pressing the feet down. See if you can relax the glutes a little bit here. Let's hold for a few more breaths. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. See if you can find the strength in the upper back here. And we'll tuck the toes under. We'll press the bum back towards the feet and lift up, finding that downward facing dog again. Let's raise the right leg towards the ceiling, going into three-legged dog to begin with. So we're going to keep that right hip dropped down in line with the left and press back through that left thigh. The heel shoots high, the toes point low. And now let's open that hip up. Reach that foot towards the ceiling. Inhale. 
Exhale, close the hip, bend the right knee, bring it in towards the chin, squeeze. And inhale, send it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, bring it in, squeeze, round the spine. Inhale, send it back, three-legged. Exhale, bring it in, squeeze. And we're gonna hold, find that compression strength. The three, the two, and one, let's plant that right foot between the hands. And away towards get that right knee over the ankle and inhale as you make your way up into your crescent lunge. So sending those hips nice and low, tucking that tailbone under, feeling a nice stretch with the front of the left hip. Reaching those fingertips nice and high. Inhale. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Drop that back heel to the mat, finding warrior two, right side. And gazing over the tip of your right hand. Keep that breath going. Just check that that right thigh is tracking in the same direction as your foot. I'm trying to peel the hips open here to the long side of the mat. Inhale. Exhale, drop the elbow onto the knee, left arm comes underneath and overhead, peeling that chest open, finding our extended side angle posture. Really reaching through those fingertips and keeping that breath going. Option to stay here. If you're going well, maybe bringing that right arm inside of that left leg, driving those hips low. Inhale, coming all the way back up, finding that warrior two again. We'll straighten that right leg. Let's pivot on that right heel, turn the foot in. Inhale, and exhale, let's interlace the fingers behind the back. So palms towards each other. Inhale, draw the shoulder blades together, hands away from the back, and exhale, little bend to the knees as we fold forward. Taking the arms overhead, Working into our shoulder extension. As you're here, tipping the weight forward into the balls of the feet slightly. And think of lifting your center of gravity. So lifting those sit bones nice and high. Inhale here, exhale, look to your navel, flex your spine. We're going to release the hands, bring the hands back to the mat and walk in the hands back to the top of the mat. We'll find a high lunge position. Plant the hands, inhale, send that right foot back and up by three-legged dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Holding that downward facing dog, you can drop to child's pose if you wish or join me for a vinyasa. Inhale as you come forward, finding our high plank. Exhale as you lower down, chaturanga and that's no knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog now if you wish. And exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, inhale, raise the left leg high. So again, we're keeping those toes pointing down, the heel shoots back, press back through that right hip, drop that left hip down. And now open the hip up, sending that foot nice and high, working those outer glutes. Inhale, exhale, close the hip, bend the knee, bring it in, squeeze. Inhale, shoot it back, three-legged dog. Exhale as you bring it in, squeeze. Find that compression. Inhale, shoot it back. Exhale, bring it in, squeeze. Finding that compression. And we're going to drop the left foot between the hands. Staying in that high lunge position, runner's lunge position, left knee over the ankle. Inhale as you come up into your crescent lunge. Sinking nice and low through those hips. Remember, we can have that back knee bent if you wish, if you're quite tight, just the intention to get that back leg straight. You know, we just want to feel that stretch through the front of the right hip. 
and find length through your spine here. Just make sure we're not shrugging the shoulders up by the ears, but there's space around the shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Pivot on that back foot, drop the heel, and we'll find our warrior two, left side. Keep that breath going. See if you can tuck your tailbone under slightly here. Let's find a little bit more space through the front of the hips. And soften the shoulders away from the ears. Keep that breath going. Keep the bandas on. Inhale. Exhale. Drop the left elbow to the knee. Right arm comes underneath and overhead. Extended side angle. And again, we're trying to peel the chest open to the ceiling here, reaching overhead. Sinking those hips nice and low. But keep those hips peeling open to the long side of the mat if you can. Again, option to stay here, option to bring that left hand down inside of that left foot. Find a little bit more depth and a little bit more opening through those hips. Inhale as we make our way back up into that warrior two. Stay with it if you can. Keep breathing. Inhale, straighten the left leg. We'll pivot on that left heel. Turn the feet in so the toes are in slightly, the heels are out. Inhale. As we exhale, folding forward. Let's catch the big toes this time. If you can't get to the big toes, take the hands onto the shins or you can just bring hands to your mat or to a block. Inhale, find length. And exhale, pulling on the toes, folding forward. And breathing. Good. Finding strength through the legs here again. Remember, we're tipping the weight forward slightly and we're lifting our center of gravity, lifting those hips nice and high. Just check the shoulders aren't coming to the ears here. We're activating the scapula, pulling the shoulder blades down the back. We're freeing up the neck. Inhale, we'll lift the gaze, find a flat back. Exhale, let's put a little bend in the knees. We'll bring the hands back to the mat. We'll walk the hands around to the left. So we're back at the top of the mat. And send that left foot back to meet the right. Again, you can find downward facing dog here. Or Jolly for Vinyasa. Inhale as we come forward, high plank. And exhale, lowering down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Holding that downward facing dog. Breathing. Let's walk the hands towards the feet. And on your next inhale, let's roll all the way up to standing. For a balance. So I'm going to turn this way so you can see me. Let's bring uh, let's bring the feet together. Feet together. So the big toes touching. Little gap between the heels here. We'll sink into those heels. Bend the knees and take the arms up. So finding your utkatasana. So building our leg strength, our glute strength. Let's make sure the weight is shifted into the heels. Let's take the arms forward. Let's wrap the right arm underneath the left. And again, it doesn't matter how far we go. If we're here, this is all good. It's just working into our shoulders. If we can get the palms to touch, get the palms to touch. So we're here. And we need to try to lift the elbows up as high as you can. Good, your option one is to stay here. Your option two is to bring that right leg up, pass it over the left leg. Again, we can be here, or we're gonna to try to wrap that right foot around that left leg and sink. So we're sinking through the hips, but we're reaching through those arms. 
Hold if you can. Inhale. Exhale, release the foot. We're going to start to tip forward, making our way into a variation of warrior three. So from this angle, we're sending that right foot back. The body becomes parallel with the mat if we can. Just find a fixed point on your mat to help keep your balance here. And we're trying to keep that right hip closed so the toes point down. Inhale, exhale, release the arms. Let's bring the hands to the mat and we'll find standing splits. So sending that right leg as high as we can, pulling the, the head in towards that left shin. Option to bring that left hand onto that leg. You're going well if you've got the balance. Bring the right hand onto the leg as well. Inhale. Exhale. Let's bring that right foot back down to meet the left. Extend through your spine, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And inhale. Let's roll all the way back up to standing. And let's try the other side. And then those big toes touching, the heels are a little bit wider than each other, and we'll sink down. Find that Utkatasana, raising the arms, breathing, relaxing as much as you can in this posture. Shift the weight into the heels, find the bandages, make sure they're on. Arms out, left arm wraps underneath the right arm now. And again, just take it to wherever you're comfortable. Again, if you're really tight in the shoulders, maybe this is us. This is all good. Otherwise, you're trying to bring those palms to touch. Send the elbows high. And again, if you're going well, shift the weight into the right foot and cross the left leg over the right leg. And again, maybe we're wrapping that left foot around the right leg. And we're sinking low through those hips. Reaching through those arms, maybe lifting the gaze slightly. Stay with it a couple more breaths. And releasing that left leg will start to tip forward, sending that left leg back. And finding that warrior three. Keep the breath going. Find the balance here. Building that leg strength and improving our balance, our concentration. Let's release the arms, hands to the mat, and let's pull in. Stand in splits. Send that left leg high. Pull the head in towards the right shin. And again, if you're going well, option to take the right hand around the back of the leg, option to take the left hand. Which I'm not going to go, not going to do today. Inhale and exhale. Bend that left knee, bring that left foot down. Inhale, find length through your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Come into stand. Inhale to come all the way up. And exhale. Make our way down to seated. Let's come to the tops of the mats. Bring feet together, big toes touching. Inhale, raise your breath. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step in. We're jumping the feet back, finding that high plank. Let's hold that high plank. Inhale. And exhale, lower down knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Come into sit. Inhale, jump step, or kneel through to a seated straight legged position. Now, step in the We might overrun. What we can do, 
because there's no other class going up. So we can our own. Let's work some more on our hips. Let's bend the right knee, bring the heel in towards the buttock, and allow that right knee to fall out to the side. Square the chest off to the top of the mat, left leg strong. Inhale and exhale, folding forward. And again, we can come to wherever feels good. Just take the ankle, the shin. If you take the foot, take the foot. But just be mindful that we're not starting to pull the shoulders up towards the ears. Keep the integrity of the upper back and move with your breath. Inhale to find a little bit more length. Exhale to press a little bit deeper if you can. And just finding strength in that right leg, encouraging the knee to the mat. We inhale to come up and exhale. Let's twist open to the right. So left hand comes onto the right knee. Open the body up, long side of the mat. Let's inhale the right arm high. And as we exhale, a little bit of side flexion as we reach towards that left foot. And again, it doesn't matter if you can take the foot or not. We just want to feel that nice side stretch. Keep the body open, long side of the mat. Every inhale, try to find a little bit more length. Every exhale, see if you can twist open a little bit more. Keep the breath going. Keep the bandas on. Take one more breath here. As you exhale, look down. Inhale to come back up. And exhale, let's release. Straighten the right leg, then the left knee. Heel to the buttock, and the knee falls out to the side. Sort of the left foot onto the inner right thigh. Inhale, find length. And exhale, falls forward. Keeping that right leg nice and strong. So pull the toes back towards the body. Again, don't force. Just move with the breath. Inhale, find a little bit more length. Exhale, press a little bit deeper if you can. And just meditate, find that space within. Notice, just witness, how does that left hip feel? How does that right leg feel? Be a lot more loose now. Inhale to come all the way up and exhale. We'll twist open to the left side of our mat now. The right hand comes onto the left knee, keeping that right leg strong. Inhale the left arm high and exhale, side flexion. Again, just reaching towards that right foot. And again, it doesn't matter if you get to that foot or not. Just focus on feeling that nice stretch through the lower part of the body, the lower back. Maybe lifting the gaze, so you're trying to gaze up underneath the arm towards the ceiling here. We'll stay here a few more breaths. Inhale. Exhale, looking down. Inhale, coming all the way back up. And exhale, release. Let's bring the feet together and we'll come into a forward fold. So again, if you need to sit on a block here or a cushion, if you have really tight hamstrings and it feels that your, your weight is shifting back like this, then I really would advise you to sit on a block. We're going to try to get some mobility in these hips. Inhale, find length. And as you exhale, think of moving from the hips. So again, don't worry about getting to the toes. Don't worry where this is we just want to start folding from those hips think of stomach to thighs and again just relax so don't take hold of the toes it's a temptation to pull if you take hold of the toes so don't take hold of the toes just stay and move with your breath again inhale to find it a little bit more length a little bit more open in the chest and exhale to press a little bit deeper and keep that movement going Always working with that breath rather than working against the breath, rather than forcing. And 
Inhale, lifting the gaze. And exhale. Navasana. We have to do it. We have to. Should we do two rounds? Two rounds of five breaths of Navasana? Come on. Two rounds. When have I ever done two rounds in class? So let's tuck the tail one under. We'll find a squishy bit between sit bones and coccyx. Keep that back nice and upright. Keep the chest nice and open. Hands underneath the thighs. We're just going to lift the feet off the mat. As always, stay here for your option one. Release the legs completely for your option two. Your option three is here. Or your option four, your full Navasana. The legs are straight. Let's stay. Maybe three more breaths. Two more breaths. One, exhale, release. Give yourself a squeeze. And we'll take one more round. Inhale into your Navasana. Shoulders back, chest open. Holding. Four. Keep that breath going. Three. You're doing well, I can see you. Two. Good. Two and a half. And one, exhale, release, get stuff, we'll come to lie down. Let's bring our bum to the center of the mat. Take the hands as your front, flex into your spine, make sure those banders are on, draw the navel in as we roll all the way down to a lying down position. Let's bring the hands by the hips, shoulder blades come under the back so the chest is nice and open. Let's take the feet to hips width apart or slightly wider than hips width. And just check that the knees are over the ankles. We're going to do a round of bridge. So hands by the hips. If full back bend is in your practice, you want to do your full back bend here. Go ahead and do your full back bend. Shoulders, uh, chest nice and open, shoulder blades under the back. And when you're ready, inhale. Let's tuck the tailbone under, lift the hips up. Maybe walk in the shoulders under the back. We're lifting the hips a little higher. If you wish to interlace the fingers here behind the back, interlace the fingers. Just driving those heels down. We're lifting through the front body, opening through the chest. Working the strength through the legs, working the flexibility through the front of the hips. We'll stay a couple more breaths if you can. Squeeze the glutes if you're in your bridge. Release the glutes if you're in for back bend. One more breath. And exhale. Let's lower all the way back down. Release the hands and hug the knees into the chest. We'll drop the feet back onto the mat. We'll take the feet as wide as the mat. We're just going to window wide for the legs. Take the arms out to the side and drop the knees over to the right. Inhale, bring the knees back through center. And exhale, take them over to the left. We're just releasing the spine. Inhale, and as we exhale, let's just bring the legs down onto the mat. Take the heels as wide as the mat, coming into Shavasana. Probably the easiest practice you've had with me, right? Take up space with the arms, palms facing up. Tucking the chin slightly so the back of the neck is long. Closing the eyes. And just releasing your Uchai breath now. Releasing your bandas. And just allowing the body to be heavy. Surrendering your body to the earth. Letting go of the practice.
Just noticing any sensations in the body from your practice. We're just checking the face is soft here and the jaw is relaxed. Maybe giving that jaw a wiggle just to check there's no tension there. And we'll rest in Shavasana. A good amount of time to rest in Shavasana. It's about five minutes for every 30 minutes of practice. And it's something that you never really get a chance to do in the, in the studio class. Usually just five minutes Shavasana, eight minutes if you're lucky. It's one of the most important parts of the practice to have that stillness, complete stillness. Try to resist any temptation to move. And never skip your Shavasana. Bringing your awareness to your natural breath and just watching that breath. Just trying to keep the focus on the breath. Noticing the chest rising and falling. Noticing the wind in the back of the throat. And if the mind wanders from the breath, notice when it's wandered off. And just keep drawing it back to your breath, to focus. This is simple breath meditation. Just staying here. And I'll wake you up when our time is done. And as you, as you rest here, be reminded to be gentle, gentle to your body. The yoga journey is your own personal journey. And it's one that shouldn't be rushed. Just appreciating your time on the mat. as you connect mind and body through the breath. Without judgment, without comparison to anybody else. Just you. So 
exploring your world through the body. We will take a deep inhale now. Exhale the breath, completely connect the navel to the spine. Inhale your breath into your heart space. Exhale the breath into the fingertips, the toes, and start to wiggle the fingers and toes as you bring movement back to your body. Rotating your wrists and your ankles, starting to move your limbs. And bringing your feet, your legs together and taking your arms overhead for a full body stretch and a full extension through your spine. And draw the knees into the chest, give yourself a squeeze. And as always, just taking a moment to show gratitude for all you've been given so far in your life, for the abundance of nature, for the love of your family, of your friends, their support, their guidance, their patience. And when you're ready, just rock it from side to side and rock it over to your right hand side as if you've just woken up And then joining me again in a comfortable seated cross-legged position. And taking your time to come back. And when we're there, we'll bring our hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart center. Just reconnecting with your breath again for a moment. We'll finish with an almond three shanties. Join me. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale for all. 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hare. Raising your hands to your head for kindness in your thoughts to yourself and to others. Hands to your heart for kindness in your actions and to your lips for kindness in your words. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. From my heart to your heart, always. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Our first live class via YouTube. Um, the next class is going to be Sunday morning, potentially tomorrow night. I might do one tomorrow night as well, actually. Why not? Got nothing better to do, have I? Um, so, yeah, there'll probably be one tomorrow night and um, probably at the same time. I'll um, put something out on social media um, to let you know the time anyway. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining you guys. Uh, it's been fun. And um, the time went really quickly. There was more that we had planned, but um, but yeah, hopefully it was a nice, gentle, chilled um, class for you guys. Please give me feedback about the um, the audio. If you can't hear me very well, I have got a, a different camera. I just you know, thought go easy with this one. It's just through my webcam, so I do have a, a camera and a, and a microphone that I can set up. Um, the less tools I thought the better for our first one and now I know that I can't play music because it stops the video because of copyright so um it's been on that for next time but um but yeah I hope you feel a little bit more restful a little bit more peaceful um a little bit more open in your body I'm looking forward to reading some of the comments that have been coming up and um and yeah like I say do give me feedback and thank you for joining you guys I shall see you on social media because we can't see each other in person because of the plague um so uh, i will see you on social media and i shall see you all being well tomorrow for more thank you so much for joining me namaste 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 I love you guys thank you oh so i should answer some questions um someone had frozen screen Oh, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Richard Aston, I'm late to the party. Will you be doing this again? Yes, I will. Hopefully tomorrow evening. So join me then. Um, oh, Emma. Thanks. Oh, can you hear me fine? Thank you. It's good to know. Oh, wonderful, Isabella. Thank you so much. Oh, lovely to see you on here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, thank you, guys. Wonderful. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for joining me. And uh, and yes, I shall see you tomorrow. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Thank you. Bye. Good night. <laughs>